as the creature faded from the circle, it felt as if reappearing someplace else, leaving the farmlands far behind. Yet the creature was saddened, for even though the beings inhabiting the farm might not have given it the kindest of welcomes into this world, it had felt like a small part of their existence, recognized as a being, albeit an insignificant one, of its own. Now, as the small creature once more began to explore its unfamiliar surroundings, it felt alone. Interesting. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Awakening. Let's take a look at what this is. Alright, just finished chapter one, that's all it is. Oh my. I feel like we've come into a slightly darker part of this world. A tree, old and robust, was standing at the edge of the lake. Along the bark there were peculiar room inscriptions. Oh my gosh, the scar, the star, I, wow, I'm trying to say sky and stars at the same time, it's not working out very well. Even during a night as dark as this one, the clear sky allowed the stars to shed their light on the small creature's surroundings. I just cannot get over how beautiful this game is. How wonderful it would be if they could shine like that forever! The small creature said to itself as it dreamily looked up at the night sky. Can I take the star? No matter how hard it wished, the stars wouldn't come down to the small creature. <laughs> Let's see what things happen. Hello. I saw you behind that tree. In case you missed it, I'll do it again. Peekaboo! I'm guessing either a fish or some sort of water creature? Whoa! That's pretty cool. Oh my. Um. <laughs> okay. The moldy stick had suddenly been set aflame, and quickly burned to a crisp. All that remained was a pile of ash and a small piece of the charred stick. Well, that was unexpected. Oh, hello there. A group of Alvor had suddenly appeared up in the tree's canopy. Nothing but cinder and a blackened piece of the stick remained after the fire. I'm guessing I don't want to necessarily um, activate all the elements until I've run out of other options. What Whoops. happened? The small creature thought. Scratching its head as it watched grains of ash get swept away with the wind. The creature picked up the charred stick. Well, that was a bit of an oops. Below the alve tree, there was a stone inscribed with strange runes. These runes look familiar somehow. The small creature thought as it moved its hand over the carved surface. They look familiar, huh? Can I do anything with the stone? The stone was far too heavy for the creature to move. Now there's a big surprise. And this is the circle of mushrooms where we came out of. Let's go take a look. The small creature had reappeared in another circle of mushrooms, 
much like the one the creature had entered not long ago. So I wonder, is this still the same night, or is this um, many years later? Or is this even the same kind of dimension, if you will? I guess there's no point in going back to the farm. The small creature stated with a determined nod. <laughs> the mushroom caps felt soft and moist against the creature's hand. Not quite what I was expecting, but okay. Oh, this is a lake. It's not a river. Okay. The lake was still, its dark water silently reflecting the foreboding tree line. Foreboding? It's a beautiful tree line. I don't know what you're talking about. The water looks awfully dark, the small creature said as it saw the rocks get swallowed up by the water over and over again. Probably the small creature was tempted to enter the water, but hesitated at the last second. Okay. Can we head anywhere else? I think our only option is to head to the lake shore. What do we have for objectives in this one? We currently have no objectives. Alright, exploration time. My favorite kind of time. Let's go see what's down by the lake. This surely is a beautiful place. But why did the Alf Queen send me here? The creature wondered as it looked out across the glimmering lake, doubting that there would be a place for someone such as it along its shores. Hmm. Okay. So we have a fishing net, a bottle, an iron ring, and of course the leaf the lake and bulrush rods. We can head to the glade or to the forest edge from here. Let's take a look at this iron ring first. A post with an iron ring mounted on it was sticking up from the ground. If I was big enough, I could put this on my finger, the small creature said with a shrewd smile. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. The small creature lifted the ring and let it fall down again with a thud. <laughs> that's adorable. Okay. Let's take a look at the fishing net. A frayed fishing net covered in fish remains had been washed ashore. Who would want to eat this? The small creature said with disgust as it removed a rotten fish head from the net. Yeah, I'm thinking this guy might have some, um... Instilled memories. I'm guessing it's from... Something spawned from a dead guy? But it obviously doesn't seem to remember much of it, anything. Hey, more night sky. How wonderful it would be if they could shine like that forever. The small creature said to itself as it dreamily looked up at the night sky. That is just so beautiful. Alright, what is going on with this bottle? A glass bottle was floating on the lake, not giving in to the small waves attempts to bring it to shore. It looks like there is something inside of it. The small creature thought to itself as it fixated its eyes on the bottle. The Probably water wasn't shallow enough for the creature to reach the bottle. I kind of thought so. Can I do anything with the fishing net? After getting entangled in the fishing net for a while, the small creature finally managed to pick it up. <laughs> Oh, 
Not entirely sure what I can do with that. What's going on with the bull rush pods? A group of bulrush plants were growing along the shoreline. I wonder if they could be of any use, the small creature said as it examined the strange grass. The small creature reached out and grabbed the strange plants. Okay. The lake was still. Okay. So I guess I did some things with the uh, lake a little early. But whatever. Let's find out what happens with these different elements. Because I'm not seeing anything else that we can really do. That's a little spooky. Hello up there. You are not part of the mountain. You are something much bigger. Well, maybe not much bigger than me anyway. It's a little spooky. What the... Well, that's interesting. Oh, hello. You guys are fun. A knocking. Hello. How you doing? Nakan is a being that is said to dwell within the deepest lakes and rivers of the land. Lone travelers have been known to hear his ominous song as they take a moment to rest at the water's edge. If they find themselves listening to his enchanting melody for too long, a strange urge to join him in the dark water instills itself in the unlucky traveler. Is that so? As the creature opened its mouth to introduce itself, Nakan began to speak. Why, hello there, little one. Who might you be? Nakan said with a charming smile. I... The creature began, but Nakan quickly interrupted. Aren't you a talkative little one? But... The small creature tried, but Nakan interrupted once more. Is there anything you can do? Besides staring like an imbecile, Nakan continued, now with a snide smirk on his face. Just stare at me. Stare like those pesky Alvor swirling around in the trees with their magic, flaunting their melodies as if they think them to be better than mine. Preposterous. The lake is my domain, and mine alone. If only I could leave the water, I might be able to get a hold of their secrets. Nakan muttered as he stroked his chin in thought. Anyway, my problems with the Alvor are none of your business. Why don't you use your tiny little feet and skip away out of my sight like a little bunny? Hop, hop! Nakan exclaimed, making a waving gesture towards the small creature. So not a very nice guy. The small creature suddenly felt an urge to join Nakan in the lake, but as it felt the cold water around its feet, it changed its mind. Well, that's good. Don't necessarily want to join that guy. He seems to be kind of a prick. <laughs> uh, what can I do? What does this one do? 
Oh, the guy up there starts moving. Interesting. And I can't do anything more with this one. Okay, I think I will head to the glade first. Let's see if we can get that bottle out of there with something. What is that? We have nettles. And a hollow shell. And that really seems to be about it. A hollow shell was lying on the ground. It has a hole right through it, the small creature said, surprised by the strange shape of the shell. Can we take it? The small creature picked up the mysterious shell. Okay, so now I have a shell. A row of nettles was blocking the small creature's path. I hope they aren't poisonous. The small creature thought to itself as it tried to find a way around the nettles. I knew I shouldn't have touched them, the small creature said, rubbing the rash on its hand. Poor guy. I'm sorry. I knew that was going to happen. I don't know why I did it. Actually, hold on. What happens here? Okay. Bushes move. Aww. The little owl is stuck, it seems. Ooh, what did that do? Oh, she glows. Or he, I don't know. The small creature quietly listened as the wingless Alva began to sing a sad, enchanting melody while looking towards the dark sky. You don't have your wings. Oh my. Better go find them. Alright, let's head to the forest edge. Let's see what's over here. Hello, Natraman. Ramen. The Natram is always moving from place to place, searching for something not visible to normal eyes, unable to rest until it has found what it is looking for. Taking the shape of a raven, it can only be seen during these darkest of nights, spreading its black wings across the sky. Interesting. Can I talk to you? Hello! The small creature said as loud as it could, trying to get the attention of the Natram up on the tree branch. Missing its right eye, the Natram had to turn its head to see the creature. Who are you? The small creature asked politely, even though the Natram hadn't responded to its greeting. The Natram twitched its head back and forth to be able to study the creature thoroughly. Then, it started to speak. Yes, yes, I can see your past. You are a very helpful creature. Kind, yes. Risen from the grave, familiar, yes. But the future, I cannot see. No, no. The future lies within the right eye. Yes, the right eye will tell you what is about to come. Once the right eye is back in the void, the future will reveal itself before your very eyes, yes. The Natrum called out, clacking with its beak. Huh. So you want your right eye back. We'll see what I can do. And these mushrooms have eyes. 
red toadstools had sprung up from the ground. These mushrooms look different from the ones I've seen before, the small creature thought, studying them closely. The toadstool trembled slightly as the creature touched it. Red toad. I'm guessing these will be the same as these ones. There's an old well here. In the clearing, there was a long since dried up well. Is this perhaps where your eye fell? It looks depleted. I wonder if there could be something down there, the small creature said, as it peered down into the emptiness. And there is a rope on the dead tree. Let's take a look just to know that I have the right idea. Lost the ability to see into the future. Okay. It looked. As the small creature touched one of the stones, a few pebbles rocked loose and fell into the well. Okay. Let's check out the dead tree, shall we? A hollow ash tree, dead and colorless, was standing near the well. The little ones have somewhere to live, the small creature said, watching a number of insects skitter across the bark. <laughs> cool. With just a faint touch, the bark cracked and fell down into the small creature's hand. That was unexpected. Can I touch it again? The dead tree had nothing else to offer the small creature. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So I can't do anything with those as of yet. All right, Natrum. Let's see what I can do for you. That makes you crow. Oh my. <laughs> That's cool. So I'm guessing something's in there then. Wait, I just heard... Oh! Okay. Hello there, slug. How you do? Now there's a bunch of slime on the well. Okay. Um. I will be back, Mr. Nitrumman. Or Natrumman. Whatever. Natrum. Ah. Let's go back to the sacrificial stone. Okay, if we can't do that, then perhaps we can do something with the bulrush pods? That works. The small creature placed the bulrush pods on the stone. Okay, and what happens if we burn them? As the bulrush began to smolder, a trail of smoke emerged and began its journey towards the sky.
Okay, so that's done. Can we do anything else here? That just makes you peek out. I wonder, can we do anything with the owl? Hello. As the alvor started to cough from the thick smoke, a thin trail of alv dust fell from one of them, forming a small pile on the ground. Well, that's not very nice. Take a look. A pile of alv dust had formed on the ground underneath the tree. Um, could you not stand in front of it? Thank you. It sure does sparkle, the small creature said as it stood in awe of the beautiful powder. I wonder if perhaps we can bring this to... The small creature managed to scoop up the glowing pile of alv dust. Well, I'm guessing we're done here. Red toads... Okay, those are the toadstools again. I don't think there's anything really important. I think they're just kind of a, a presence here. Do those do anything to you, or are they just kind of there? They're just kind of there for you. Okay. How can I get to that bottle? Can I use this perhaps? Hmm. Okay. Can I possibly give the alf dust to this guy? Is it just me or is the lake sparkling? Ooh, you're shiny now. The small now. creature poured the glowing alf dust into the lake. This feeling, I can feel them. Their power coursing through me. Maybe you aren't as useless as I thought. Here's um, a bottle for your troubles. I'm sure you can use it for whatever it is you do. Nakan said with a sarcastic look. You may still be able to prove yourself slightly competent. Get me one of their melodies. I want to see for myself just what makes their song so captivating. Your reward will be greater next time. So now we have a glowing Nacken. That's, um, lovely. Empty bottle and a blank paper. Okay. How would one capture a melody? The small creature quietly listened as the wingless Alva began to sing a sad, enchanting melody while looking towards the dark sky. Could I possibly use the hollow shell with this or not? No, I don't think so. Might I be able to use this to part the way? No, okay. Hmm. Alright, I'll come back later then. Now, I feel like there's something we might be able to do with the well, but I don't know what. Maybe the fishing net? Oh, apparently that worked. Okay. In we go. Let's 
see you in a minute, Atrum. <laughs>